you been since you've been to SeaWorld? Uh, I've never been to SeaWorld. Never been to SeaWorld? No. Trent, how long has it been since you were at SeaWorld? I think like 16 years. Oh. You know how long it's been since I've been to SeaWorld? Uh -huh. 37 years. 37 years. I was six years old, I think, was the last time I came to SeaWorld. It's crazy, right? You're 43. I am 43, yes. Today's SeaWorld, tomorrow property. Good morning. Well, we got back from SeaWorld pretty late. Uh, sometime after 10. And then I stayed up for a bit. Just kind of decompressed from the drive and chill. So I got to bed kind of late. Hey, stop eating grass. Got to bed kind of late. And uh, in turn, I woke up late. So I didn't get up here as quick as I'd like to. Um, I ended up getting up here last night. Oh, about 10.30 p.m. So it was a long day yesterday. But today is going to be a very, 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 very big day for AZ Off Grid. Right now, I'm gonna quickly disconnect the little trailer, connect to the equipment trailer, and we are gonna go for a three hour drive, give or take. And finally, finally, go pick up my very first tractor. That's right, I'm getting a tractor. All right guys, I'll see you when we get to the uh, equipment place. Okay, so we are not at the equipment dealer. We are back up to the property. Um, I did go ahead and get the tractor. I didn't have a whole lot of time to uh, break out the camera and record anything while I was there. Okay, so the equipment dealer is right next to a very busy highway in a somewhat blind right-hand curve. So there's, there's traffic coming around the curve just uh, outside of the uh, equipment dealer at 65 to 75 miles per hour. And you have very little time to jump on the highway from there. And there's very limited room to load equipment. So uh, once I pulled in, I got in there, started signing some paperwork. I had two trucks and trailers pulling right behind me, wanting to load up. So I had to get this tractor loaded and get out of the way so they had room to maneuver and get onto the highway. So this is a place that I picked it up at. It's just outside of Wickenburg, Arizona. Um, pretty small place, but they've got a decent, uh, a decent supply of tractors, different different makes and models and implements. The other reason I didn't have time to do much uh, recording was I was a bit limited on time as far as um, getting back up here before it got dark. And I almost made it. I got within about five miles of my property here when it got completely dark. And that's probably the worst spot, worst part of the road all the way up here. And I was worried about my tires getting punctured, sidewall punctures, because the rocks on the road are just ridiculous, okay? Um, so I did make it up here. Uh, 
You can tell from the tires on my trailer and my truck that I, I did quite a bit of uh, sidewall rubbing on some big rocks, but I don't think that I have, have any serious damage to them. So, all right, here we go. Here is the tractor. There she is. Real quick, you can see all the sidewall rubs on my tires from all the big nasty rocks. Same thing on the other side. I don't see any gouges, but uh, all right. This is a Coyote DK 6010 SE with the hydrostat transmission. All right, so I went ahead and got the backhoe attachment for it. I'm gonna need that up here for sure. And in the bed of my truck, while I was there, I went ahead and purchased the uh, mechanical thumb that I'm gonna attach here myself. Um, I thought about doing the hydraulic thumb, but that's a huge increase in price, a huge increase in price. And uh, I, I couldn't install that myself. So the mechanical thumb, I can install myself. All right, I'm gonna get this thing off the trailer. I'm not kidding guys, I, I didn't put that there. The guy at the uh, equipment dealer, he put it there. Um, I've never been on a tractor before. <laughs> so this is my very first time moving this thing. It ought to be fun and interesting. Um, I'm no stranger to large equipment. In my 20s, I used to operate heavy equipment off-road. Give you a couple of pictures of what I used to operate in the mountains and hills of uh, San Diego County. Yeah, they are, they are big, much larger than this by far, but it's a totally different animal. So um, there's gonna be a learning curve and some, some time to get used to it. So let me get this thing unstrapped, fired up, warmed up, and uh, we'll try to get it off the trailer. All right, she's completely disconnected. I gotta lower these ramps, get them adjusted for the uh, uh, tire width. Get them adjusted, fire this thing up, let it warm up, and then I'm gonna back it off the trailer. All right, I got the ramps down. Here we go. It's my first time on this tractor. Gotta adjust the seat. <laughs> Went right to the floor. All right, I'll have to adjust this a little bit more in the future. Once I get the hang of this. All right. All right, let's start it up. This is brand new, by the way. It's got 1.6 hours on it.
okay. I think that's going to be warmed up enough for me to move it. <laughs> that's smooth. All right guys, there you go. That's my first time on this puppy. That was super simple. I'm gonna get the hang of this real quick. Smiles. Okay, so unfortunately it is several hours later. I didn't realize that the tractor had pretty much no fuel in it. So I had to make a run to town. And if you know anything about where I where I live, where my property is up here. A run to town takes usually about two and a half to three hours round trip. And that's just, that's not even messing around. That's just getting to town, doing what you gotta do, and then getting back up here. So it's been several hours now, and I don't know if you can tell, but the sun is gonna be going down here soon. So I don't wanna take time to, to start farting around on this new tractor. So, um, I will pick back up with you guys in the morning. All right, so I picked up this 14 gallon diesel transfer tank. It's just a portable one on wheels. It comes with a, uh, just like a fill nozzle or whatever. It's got a couple of valves to prevent flow from going through the hose. Um, I figured this is probably the easiest and best solution I could use out here without getting an actual tank in my truck, which I really don't want to do. So I went down yesterday and filled this thing up and I'm going to put some diesel in the tractor. Okay, so this is where you fill the tank. And then there's also a little cap inside that you can turn to, to use as a vent. And then there's two valves down here, one on the hose and one on the tank that you can open up to start the flow of diesel. And it's working. As long as the spout is uh, lower than the level of fuel in your tank, you're gonna have flow. It's gonna take a little while because there's I don't know, roughly 12, 13 gallons in here. And it doesn't come out as fast as it does at the fuel pumps. I'm gonna fill this up and then we'll go over some stuff on the tractor. Okay, so let's talk about the tractor for a minute. This is a 2023 Coyote DK6010 SE with a hydrostatic transmission. Both the front end loader and the backhoe are removable and they're not that difficult to take off. There's also a pretty stout three point in the back for uh, different implements. 
So Coyote tractors have been around for many years. I've been interested in them for about the last, probably since I bought this property eight years ago. I've really been torn between the Coyote and the other orange tractor, the well-known orange tractor, if you know what I mean. And I was gonna buy the other tractor, the orange one, but circumstances led me to Coyote. These tractors get really good reviews. I've been watching a YouTube channel called NB88. Some of you already know who he is. He's got a Coyote tractor that he's had for years and he absolutely loves it, has no complaints about it. Now this is a much newer tra tractor and it does have uh, emission compliant modifications done to it. And that's less desirable for some people. But since they started that about, oh, eight, nine years ago, they've had very little issues with that system. This tractor does have a DPF system, a diesel particulate filter in line with the exhaust. It does not use DEF fluid, diesel exhaust fluid. So over time, it catches the soot from the exhaust. You gotta keep the RPMs up somewhere around the 2000 mark. And somewhere between, I don't know what it is, 30 and 50 hours, it'll go through a regen. It takes for anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes to do it. You just keep going about your business on the tractor and let it do its thing. Okay, so this tractor is manufactured in South Korea. There are a number of tractor models and brands that are manufactured in South Korea, and they've been doing it for a very long time, and they're, most of them are pretty solid product. Okay, so this tractor has a Daedong three-cylinder turbo diesel engine, and it produces 57.7 horsepower. I'm not sure how many horsepower go to the PTL on the rear. I think it's somewhere in the mid to high 40 horsepower, which I think will be just fine out here. Let me get you a closer look of what the engine looks like. So there's the front. You got your air filter here. Your diesel particulate filter is that silver looking tube contraption back there. You got your computer ECM or PCM up there on the top. Pretty simple, not a whole lot to it. Your battery's right down here at the front. There's your exhaust. If you're in a regen, you might want to consider keeping this up a little bit, your, your loader arm, because this is going to get really hot in a regen. And there are hydraulic lines over here. And you don't want to heat those up too much. You got your alternator, starter, and ah, there's the little baby turbo right there. This tractor did come with a loader bucket level indicator. I'm not sure that I'll, I'll use that. I don't know, we'll see over time. There's your fuel filter right here. And oil filter, I believe. And it's hard to see it, but there's your oil fill cap right there. Where my finger is in there. And hydraulic pumps right here. All right guys, so the reason why I went with Coyote versus the other popular orange tractor was this. So where I live, I have two tractor dealers very close to my house, within five miles. I've got a John Deere and a Kubota. Um, I initially went and looked at the orange one. Uh, I sat down with them, the salesman, had it all specked out. It was gonna be a, a Kubota MX-5400. Um, you have to pay extra for the loader and the backhoe, which you, you pay extra for these two, but these tractors actually come with the loader. Over at Kubota, you got to spec it with the loader. And if you want a backhoe, you got to, you know, purchase that. So I was going to buy, I'll just stop saying the other orange one. I was going to buy the Kubota MX-5400. Had it all specced out, printed out on paper. I was ready to buy it. All I told the salesman was, is I needed to wait until April. I could not get up here. This place was just trashed. It was covered in snow. And then once the snow melted off, it was a muddy mess out here. And there's no way I could get a tractor up here. And I've not got no room for it at my house in town. So I told him, just get me the tractor, get the, the backhoe installed on it, and I'll come and sign for it. 
in April. He said, okay, no problem. Well, he never got back to me. He never got back to me uh, once. Um, it was kind of irritating. And I figured if he was interested to sell me the tractor, he would have called me or sent me an email. He's, he's contacted me both ways. Um, so I started looking at the Coyote. I've been looking at these for years. I know they're a solid tractor. I don't care that they're made in South Korea. They, they, South Korea's produce a very good product. Um, it, sure, I'd, I'd rather purchase here in the USA, but um, it comes down to what you get for your, your money, okay? So I called the closest Coyote dealer to me, which happens to be over by Wickenburg, Arizona, which is hours away from my house, which really sucks. But it's not too far away from here, my property. Not, not terribly. <clears throat> so, um, I talked to a lady on the phone. I said, hey, I need a tractor that is comparable to the Kubota MX-5400. She said, well, that would be most likely the DK-6010. I said, great, I need a backhoe and a loader. She said, well, they come with a loader on them. Um, we'll have to check and see if they have a backhoe. She looked around and she found the, the dealer in Morristown. They had one of these tractors and they had one backhoe. Um, I said, great. Um, I'm going to go down there in a week, take a look at it. If I like it, I'm going to buy it. So I drove down to Morristown about a week ago. They had this tractor. It was the only one they had there of this size. They had much, uh, many other Coyote models and other brands too they don't just sell coyote but i really liked the size the horsepower and just the the basic nature of this tractor and how it works and i asked the lady there i said uh she wasn't the one i talked to on the phone previously but i said hey i need a, a backhoe also and she says i don't think we have one of those i just said yeah i think you do um i talked to another lady from one of your other stores and she looked it up said you guys might have one here so she went and asked her manager, and sure enough, they had one backhoe there. So I said, great, I'll take it. I want the whole package. Um, I said, I'll be back in about a week to pick it up. So if you would, please just have it all put together and ready, ready to go for me. She said, not a problem. So I did a, did a quick credit, gave her my information to do the credit, and I split. I had to run over to Phoenix. My son wanted to go check out Guitar Center. So we left. Um, well, I was at Guitar Center. She called me back. She said, okay, you're approved for credit. I said, great. I said, let's do it. Um, I'll come back on uh, Monday, the 24th of April, and I will sign, and I will take it away from you. She said, great. So that's what I did. I left here on Monday morning, went down there. They had it all ready to go. Uh, I signed a couple pieces of paper. Um, they briefly ran me around the tractor just showed me a couple of things he answered some of my questions and he said basically look he said i can tell you everything you want to know right now he said but tomorrow you're going to probably forget it he said basically you just need to get on this thing and start playing around with it and eventually you'll figure it out you learn it it's like anything else new that you try um, there's going to be quite a learning curve and eventually you'll figure it out so he said just go take it up to your property and, and start messing around with it and you'll figure it out so that's what I'm doing, guys. A lot of people end up getting like a somewhere between a 25 and a 35 to 40 horse tractor for their land. But I figured I need a much higher horsepower tractor because my soil here, if you've been following along my channel, you know that this is clay and rock. Lots of rock mixed in with clay. And it's, it's hard digging here. It's very hard digging and I need as much power as I can get. And I've got a hill down, down just around the corner here from my property that I need to fix. Uh, there's a wash below it that I need to fix in the road that I actually scraped on bringing this here. <laughs> and to get up that, I'm not kidding, that, that hill is really steep, very steep. And I need all the power I can get just to climb this thing back up that hill. So I think the, the 57, 7, 58 horsepower, they call it a 60 horsepower tractor. They just, that's what they call it. 60 horse it's a 57.7 um, I think there'll be plenty to get me up that hill and for all the digging I need to do around here so um, I'm going to be working this tractor over the years I've got a lot of 
road work to do, a lot of ditches to dig, stumps to pull, um, trenches. Uh, I may even end up using this. I probably will use this in the future um, to dig our future septic over there, or we're gonna build our permanent home site in the future. So this is gonna be a very useful tool. It's gonna save me a lot. Yeah, it's expensive. I will tell you though, this package, which is comparable to the Kubota MX 5400, out the door, this was $15,000 cheaper than the Kubota. So another big reason I went with Coyote. All right, guys, I think this video has been long enough. I'll go ahead and put uh, all my digging I'm going to start doing here for the first time on this tractor. I'll go ahead and put that in the next video that I'll put out here in a couple of days. But uh, I want to try to keep this video not too long because of uh, shortened attention spans these days. So that's going to do it for this one. You guys take care. You be safe. And I'll see you in the next video.